dear friends in the last video we have discussed about the laws of reflection on the basis of fermat's principle in this video we are going to discuss about the refraction laws we have the laws of refraction law of refraction on the basis of Fermat's principle. Law of refraction. We have the refraction is the phenomenon that when a light ray travels from one medium to another medium having a uh, different values of refractive index then the path of the light ray will changes that means if a light ray travel from a, a medium having refractive index mu1 and it enters to another medium having refractive index value mu2 uh, in which mu2 can be greater than or less than uh, mu1 then the actual path of the light ray will changes and the light ray will choose another path to cover the particular medium with uh, another value of refractive index. It is purely based on in uh, the fact that the velocity of light ray is not a constant in all mediums having uh, different values of refractive index. Uh, according to the with respect to the change in ref refractive index values of the medium, the velocity of the light ray will changes. So, in some denser mediums, we have the refractive index is velocity of light in vacuum divided by velocity of light in medium. Then, if the refractive index value is higher, then we can interpret that the velocity of light in that medium is something lesser. For example, if mu1 is equal to uh, c by v1 and mu2 is equal to c by v2, then if mu1 is greater than mu2, then correspondingly v1 should be less than v2. If mu1 is the greater refractive index value, then v1 is the lesser value. Okay. Then, now we are going to discuss the theory of refraction or principles of laws of refraction on the basis of Fermat's principle. We are all familiar with the Fermat principle that is uh, when a light ray travels through a medium, it will choose us out of all possible paths, the light ray will choose us a path in which the optical path having uh, has a minimum value. So, for uh, discussing about the theory of refraction, we have necessarily have to consider two mediums having refractive index values mu1 and mu2. If the value of a refractive index mu2 is greater than the value of mu1, uh, let us consider uh, the light ray is originating from the refractive the medium having refractive index mu1 and going to the second medium having refractive index value mu2 then if mu2 is greater than mu1 the light ray will choose us a path at mu2 in which the path of the light ray will be uh, will uh, the path of the light ray will approaches the normal at the point of refraction if mu2 is having lesser value then the uh, light ray in the second medium will uh, go away from the normal at the point of refraction. Now for explaining about the refraction laws uh, on the basis of Fermat's principle let us let us consider a plane, a plane uh, 
this is a plane and I am choosing the name of this plane as M1, M2, M3 and M4 and we are attaching a coordinate system to this plane this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis and this is now z-axis. Now this plane m1, m2, m3, m4 is the plane of refraction m1, m2, m3, m4 is the plane of refraction or refraction plane and we are considering a light ray originating from point A. Before that we can consider that the M1, M2, M3, M4 plane is the plane of refraction that means the uh, space or the region above this m1 m2 m3 m4 plane is a medium and let us consider it as the first medium having the value of refractive index mu1 and the space below this plane of refraction is the second another medium is a, another second medium having refractive index value mu2 for convenience we can choose that mu2 is greater than mu1 then if a light ray refracting from the uh, plane of refraction m1 m2 m3 m4 then the refracted light ray will approaches the uh, normal at the point of refraction so we can consider that a light ray is originating from this point a We are considering a point A on the y-axis as the incident point or initial point and a light ray is originating from the point A and uh, it is refracted at some point and if it is considered a normal at this point just like this and it is the original path of the light ray and since mu2 is greater than mu1 the light ray will bend towards the normal and chooses a point a path like this and let the final point of the light ray will be a point b now uh, Let us consider this point A is some distance A above the uh, through the y axis above uh, away from the origin O. Then the point P is a point in this refracting plane, and this refracting surface is at xz plane. So the coordinates of this point P will be coordinates of the point P is P is the refracting surface and the coordinates of P will be x 0 z and the coordinates of A will be 0 A 0 since it is on the y-axis and 
we are considering the point B is the final point and this final point will be here it is the y axis it is the x1 x axis this is the z coordinate or z axis and this point b will be parallel to y axis and we are obtaining a plane like this we are considering a plane like this this plane is simply to indicate that this point B is also in the XY plane in the XY plane so the point A and the point B is in the XY plane so the Z coordinate corresponding to these uh, two uh, points will be equal to 0 and we can consider that the x coordinates of the point B corresponding to the coordinate uh, is B minus C and 0 that means the point B is small p distance away in the x axis and it is small c distance away in the y axis so this point is along x axis having distance b and this horizontal distance from sorry this vertical distance is c since it is in the negative x y direction so its coordinate will be minus c now we are uh, expressing the optical path corresponding to this refraction it is the direction of light ray and this is the normal at the point at the arbitrary point of refraction so the total optical path of this light ray we have to as we mentioned in the previous uh, video lectures the process of applying Fermat's principle in the loss of optics is uh, consisting with three steps. First is obtaining the optical path and second is uh, minimizing this optical path in the, with respect to any arbitrary coordinate and in the third reducing the angles with respect to the geometrical values in our prescribed dimension that means this small a small b and small c etc now first of all we have to find the optical path so the optical path of this total refracting uh, phenomena is uh, consisting of two uh, two divisions or two sections that means total optical path l is equal to optical path in the section a p plus optical path in the section pb that means this uh, ap is the incident light ray incident light ray and pb is the refracted light ray since these two are in two different mediums we have to consider total optical path as the sum of these two so since ap is in the first medium the optical path corresponding to the uh, incident light ray will be mu1 times the geometrical distance AP plus since PB is in the second medium the total optical path will be mu2 times the geometrical distance PB so this we can be written as mu1 into root of since we have considering the Cartesian coordinate system and we have 
the coordinates of all uh, points we can choose that the geometrical distance are x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square under root then this ap having values x minus 0 whole square plus a uh, plus 0 minus a whole square plus z minus 0 whole square that means x minus 0 whole square is x square plus 0 minus a whole square is a square plus z minus 0 whole square is, is z square plus uh, for the geometrical distance pb it is mu 2 times root of pb is b minus x whole square plus c minus 0 whole square is c square plus z minus 0 whole square is z square. So, this is the total optical path corresponding to this medium. Now, we have to consider that according to the theory of Fermat's principle, this optical path, here we obtained optical path depends on two arbitrary coordinate x and z. But the optical path is in general according to Fermat's principle is independent of any other or any arbitrary coordinates. That means if we are changing this point of refraction, this is the point of refraction having coordinate x and 0 and z. It is an arbitrary point. We can choose any values for x and z. According to the values of x and z, this optical path may increase or may decrease or uh, having any values. But in throughout this process of refraction, there will be a point of refraction that corresponding to the minimum optical path and there will be a coordinates or a values for x and z uh, which gives the minimum optical path. So, that coordinates of x and z is the uh, actual point of refraction. So, we have to find that point of refraction. So, at that point of refraction, the optical path will be minimum that point will obey the Fermat's principle and that will be the actual point of refraction. Now, we have to obtain that specific point of refraction that means the specific values for x and z and that why, that's why the specific point of refraction. So, here we have to done that, uh, we have to minimize these values to obtain the minimum value of optical path. That means, at the minimum value of optical path, the variation from that minimum value to any other values or any other optical path values will not be equal to 0 and also for corresponding to that minimum value, the variation will be equal to 0. That means, the delta variation means that uh, uh, for any other optical path, the value of that optical path minus the minimum value of optical path and corresponding to the minimum value of optical path, the variation will be equal to 0. So, we have to minimize this optical path with respect to x and with respect to z. Now, that minimization process can be done by using the theory of der derivatives, partial derivatives that means dou L divided by dou x and dou L divided by dou z are taking and for that a particular minimum value of optical path these derivatives of that optical path value with respect to x and with respect to z will be equal to 0. So, this is we have to done. So, first of all I am doing dou L divided by dou Z is equal to 0. That means, stating in the derivative with respect to Z and equating of uh, the optical path and equating to 0. This implies, this is our optical path expression. 
and taking the derivative with respect to z mu1 is independent of the values 2z divided by 2 times root of x square plus a square plus z square plus mu2 is independent of z and the derivative with respect to z will be 1 by 2 root of d minus x whole square plus c square plus z square into 2z. 2 and 2 get cancelled and you will get and you will get the result as z into mu1 divided by root of x square plus a square plus z square plus mu2 divided by root of d minus x whole square plus c square plus z square is equal to 0. From this expression, we can find that the quantities in denominator is square and additive. All quantities, all uh, quantities are squares, x square, a square and z square. d minus 6 have negative, uh, may be negative or positive, but taking the square, but when taking the square, these quantities also become positive and this is square and z square also positive and this all values are additive. So, the values in the denominator will also a positive one. At the numerator is the value of refractive index, it is always a positive quantity, then these two quantities are adding each other. So, these whole quantities in this square bracket are positive. So, from here we can see that if these quantities inside the square bracket is positive and it, this positive quantity is multiplied by a quantity z and we obtain the total result as negative. Then there is one and only possibility that the value of z is equal to 0. z is equal to 0 is the one and only possibility. That means z is equal to 0 means that if applying this z is equal to 0, the coordinate of our point of refraction will change us to x, 0 and 0. That means this point is a point on the x axis. That means in our figure, the point of refraction is changing from the plane or uh, changing from this point P to a point in the x axis. I am choosing this is the new point of refraction and marking it as P prime. P prime. Then P prime is a point in the uh, x axis having the same value of x but all other uh, coordinate values are 0. And so, we are obtained this is a point of refraction. So, we have to uh, retrace the our refraction process as like this. I am marking this as by solid line. This will be the incident light ray and the refracted light ray in this will be the path. And so, after refraction, the path will be something like this and the final point will also at point B. This is the incident light ray, this is the refracted light ray and also we can plot a normal at this point of refraction as like this. It is the normal at the point of refraction and I am tracing this as and marking this is the normal. So, by the theory of Fermat's principle and minimizing the optical path with respect to z is equal to and equating to 0, we obtained a new point of refraction p dash. It is a point on the x-axis. That means, 
if this point of refraction a new point of refraction situated in the point in the axis x axis itself that means this point of refraction is also a point in the x y plane that means our incident light ray point incident point is on x y plane our new refraction point is also in the x y plane and our final position is also in the x y plane that means we can write it as the incident light ray incident light ray the refracted ray and the normal at the point of refraction at the point of refraction will be in the same plane it is first law of refraction so by using the fermat principle we have obtained the first law of refraction that is the incident light ray the refracted light ray and the normal at the point of refraction will be in the same plane so we are obtaining the first law of refraction now we can rewrite the optical path as mu1 into root of x square plus a square plus mu2 into root of b minus x whole square plus c square that is substituting the values that is equal to zero now we are going to obtain or apply the second minimization condition that is dou l divided by dou x is equal to zero so before going to that minimization we can see in this figure as this is our new point of refraction but this point of refraction can change or can take any value throughout this x axis because here at the new optical path the x is also an arbitrary coordinate so this arbitrary coordinate can take any values so this can choose any values throughout this uh, axis uh, x axis but the actually at the point of refraction the fermat's principle according to fermat's principle the optical path will be minimum and that minimum optical path will correspond to a single point and at that single point the optical path will be minimum and that single point corresponding to a single x coordinate and also for that particular point of refraction the incident angle and the refracted angle will be uh, the incident angle and the refracted angle will have a particular value so by minimizing with respect to x uh, optical path with respect to x we are actually obtaining the connection between these angular dependence okay now let us minimize these values implies we can write mu1 is independent of uh, x mu1 into 1 by 2 root of x square plus a square into 2x plus mu2 into 1 by to root of b minus x the whole square plus c square into 2 into b minus x into minus 1 okay which implies 2 and 2 get cancelled um, we can write it as mu1 into x divided by root of x square plus a square plus mu2 into x minus b or minus of b minus x divided by root of b minus x whole square plus c square is equal to 0. This means 
mu1 into x by root of x square plus a square is equal to mu2 into b minus x divided by root of b minus x whole square plus c square if this quantity is going to the uh, other side of this equality there will be a negative sign and then that negative sign is multiplied through inside that back bracket you will get b minus x now we have to find what is x what is root of x square plus a square what is b minus x and what is this quantity from our figure you can see that this is the value of x this is the x coordinate value at the new point of refraction and this is the distance a so this hypotenuse or the our incident light ray is the uh, root of x square plus a square value this is the length of root of x square plus a square so x divided by root of x square plus a square this is x and this is root of x square plus a square so x divided by root of x square plus a square corresponding to the sine of this angle sine of this angle but this angle is equal to this this angle because if i am placing a uh, line through this point a that will be per, uh, that will be parallel to this axis uh, x axis parallel to x axis if i am considering a line parallel to this x axis or uh, uh, through the point a this is that line then these two are parallel lines and this line is intersecting that two parallel lines and so this angle and this angle will be equal so if this angle and these two angles are equal this is our angle of incident i because it is our incident light ray and this is normal so x by root of x square plus a square will corresponding to this also the angle i then x by root of x square plus i square will be equal to sine of this angle i so we can write it as we can write as this is mu1 into sine of angle i now next is b minus x divided by root of b minus x whole square plus c square so this is the total quantity b and b minus x will be this this is b minus x and this total vertical distance is c so root of b minus x all square uh, plus c square will be this hypotenuse values or our refracted light ray this will be b minus root of b minus x all square plus c square and b minus x divided by root of b minus x whole square plus c square will be opposite side divided by hypotenuse that is sine of this angle so as we done earlier if i am uh, drawing a line through b which is parallel to the x axis then this is the line of intersect between these two axes and this is our uh, new normal line and so this angle and this angle are equal that is the angle between our refracted light ray and the normal is equal to this angle but this angle is nothing but the angle of refraction r then this also will be the angle of refraction r so b minus x divided by root of b minus x whole square plus c square will be sine of this angle r so we can write it as which is equal to mu2 times sine of angle r so we can say that sine of angle i divided by sine of angle r will be equal to 
mu2 divided by mu1 this is nothing but the famous snell's, snell's law if mu1 is the incident medium and mu2 uh, the refractive index of incident medium and mu2 is the refractive index of the second medium and i is the incident angle and r is the refraction angle then sin i divided by sin r is equal to mu2 divided by mu1 is nothing but the snell's law snell's law of refraction that means if we are considering the first medium having refractive index value m1 is air medium and the second medium is any medium having refractive index value mu2 we are writing a relativity con relativistic concept i mean relating to the air medium or uh, uh, relating to the medium having minimum value of refractive index or uh, relating uh, to that quantity if i am choosing the first medium as ha air having refractive index value mu1 is equal to 1 then the refractive index of the second medium mu2 will be sine of i divided by sine of r it is the famous snell's law that's why this is the snell's law sine i divided by sine r that is we are obtaining uh, or we are discussing the theory of refraction or law of refraction by using fermat's principle and we obtain that the two laws of refraction first of all the point of refraction is in the same plane corresponding to the incident and refracted light ray and second one the particular value of i and r where i is the incident angle and r is the refraction angle which depends on the refractive index of the incident and refracted medium and we obtain these two laws by using fermat's principle that's why we explain the laws of refraction by using the Fermat's principle. Okay, if you like my lecture, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.